Welcome to the New Trust Economy, where your hosts, Blockchain 101 author and founder of Rise Housing, Monica Profit, and Inc. innovation columnist and brand casting strategist, Tracy Hazard, explore all things blockchain, ICO ventures, and cryptocurrency. Each week, they explore businesses, applications, and venture built on blockchain or cryptocurrency and address issues like women and diversity in tech, trust and distrust, and the economics of access and value. We would like to remind our listeners that investing in disruptive tech, ICOs, and cryptocurrency is speculative in nature and involves substantial risk of loss. We encourage you to invest carefully and do your due diligence first. Now, here are your hosts, Monica Profit and Tracy Hazard. Hi, and welcome to the New Trust Economy. I'm Monica Profit, and I'm here with Sean G. Sean from Digix Global, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Monica, for having me. So I want to like just dive into what Digix Global actually is, the Digix platform that's recently, um, the marketplace that's recently launched, and also your DGG tokens. So there's so much to unwrap here, and I just want you to tell me a little bit about why you decided what is Digix and why did you decide to, decide to start it? Sure, yeah. So Digix is a platform that was launched uh, back in 2015 with the very initial goal to help allow people get access to digital gold. Uh, be it buying anywhere from the internet or having a uh, wallet that stores their mobile phones to store this digital gold. This agenda and goal has always been the same since day one. So Digix is a platform that tokenizes physical gold and we issue our very own gold back token called DGX that represents one gram of gold. And uh, the DGD token itself that was launched in 2016 is a governance back token which we can talk about later on. So if you listed the DGX token or the DG, DGX or DTG, I think that I had something else written down. The DGX token. DGX yeah. token. So when you launched that, is that something that you put on several different platforms to be able to trade in secondary markets or is it really just on your platform? Right. So the main issuing platform is from the DGX marketplace, uh, but you could actually buy it off that marketplace and trade it on second exchanges whether they are decentralized or centralized exchanges, uh, it's all available. So have you found that that has dramatically changed what the, the traded price of the DGX token is compared to the actual gold price? Mm-hmm. Right, so that, that's, a, that's a point that a lot of uh, traders out there actually actively look for. Because in this market today, you could actually arbitrage the gold token against the traditional spot market for gold to- uh, for gold itself. I would say that on a day-to-day average, it varies anywhere between 1% to 2%. So it actually pegs pretty closely to what the real-world gold prices are. And is it typically pegging above or below, or does it actually fluctuate a total of like 2 to 4% because it goes above and below by 1% to 2%? Right, it actually goes above and below. So it depends on the market's demand for gold. If it's an environment where people are looking to buy gold, that naturally moves above the spot market prices when it's on a selling behavior it comes a little bit down so it really varies on a day-to-day basis and do you guys actually custody real gold i mean can you talk a little bit for a lot of our uh listeners are pretty new to blockchain and so some of these questions are mm-hmm. way below what they're usually your punching punching level is and some of them are actually over their heads so when you talk about a digital gold token um what is the actual custody arrangement that you have for this for the gold that backs that Right, so we have a 100% custody arrangement in a sense that for every gold token that we issue out there, we do have its physical that's held in the vaults here in Singapore, as well as in some in Canada itself. Uh, In total, we have reissued about 123 kilograms of gold, Uh, mostly are being held here in Singapore, and all these documents are actually available on the marketplace website itself. So what the technology actually allows us is to document the entire receipt or the entire supply chain of these gold bars. And on the user front, the only thing that they really get access to is the exposure of gold prices. So in essence, the user experience is I'm owning a gold token, I have exposure to gold prices. But on the back end, and what we're trying to provide is the entire custody solution for physical metal. Being stored here in Singapore, being stored in Canada, and every three months, we do a full audit to prove to the users that we do have the gold itself and it's untempered and all the gold bars, serial number will always match from quarter to quarter. So how do you do that audit? What is it like to audit gold? Is there an actual third party that, that specializes in that? Or do you guys have your own? Do you do it on video? Do you, re- like, do you have viral videos of handling gold bars? What does that look like? I think the goal is to get the, um, the 24-7 CCTV footage. That's the entire uh, model that I think a lot of people out there are looking for today. 
But right now, what we do is that we engage a third-party auditor that comes into the vaults and check every single gold bar that we have. The entire process doesn't take more than a couple of hours. Uh, in fact, a lot of these guys are highly experienced with dealing with this precious metal. They come in, they display all the gold bars on the table, look at every single bar, and identify itself against a checklist. Once these checks are being passed, a report is produced, and we upload this report on the website every three months. Fantastic. So when you say that you have launched the new Electron uh, Digix Marketplace, what does that mean in terms of you know, the, the upgrade on what you, automatic, you had already launched uh, years ago? Right, so the very first release itself only allows you to buy gold with Ether, which is the main currency for Ethereum itself. What we have actually relaunched in this new marketplace is that you can be purchasing with not just only Ether, but you can be purchasing with dollar-backed stable coins. For example, USDC uh, or even the multi-collateral DAI, which was recently revamped as well late last year. Or you can be purchasing with Tether tokens or any other token that represents dollar value. So that's the main upgrade. The second upgrade that we did was to allow the ease of information to be displayed on the same website. Previously, uh, for contact, if you were to look at the buying experience versus having the entire gold inventory, it's on two different websites. Right now, we have merged the entire display on just a single platform. So you can see, you can buy, and you can audit the gold bars on the very same platform today. Oh, that's fantastic. So what made you want to expand in this way? Did you just see a market need to use more than Ethereum? Right, so I believe that Ethereum or any other kind of like cryptocurrencies out there are highly volatile today because it does not have a real physical underlying. Of course, that's not to be said. There are some other real estate tokens which I'm sure they are quite familiar with that have physical underlying. And all these kind of tokens itself that has a physical underlying are a little bit more stable in prices. So what we set out to design at the very beginning of this mission, which is to create a currency out there that has a physical underlying. And we believe that gold itself being the universal asset of stability, Bitcoin has always been held as the digital gold. Mostly, I would say, in the, digit, in the production and supply behavior of what gold is today that mirrors itself in the Bitcoin world. But what we've done in Digix is to create actually the real digital gold token, which allows itself to be priced according to what gold moves in the actual market. So the idea is just to remove volatility, to create a more stable asset coin. I wouldn't say like a stable token itself, like uh, dollar tokens. That's fantastic. And how long have you been working on the Digix marketplace? I mean, what is the, what was the impetus for, you know, um, deciding that it's needed to become an actual marketplace? So is that more like a, a, like a kind of a secondary trading sort of platform that's just much more robust? Is it sort of like the Robin Hood of, of gold and cryptocurrency transactions? Or is it not really so much a big trading platform, but just a place where people can go and buy kind of primary issuance of stuff with multiple currencies? I guess it's like, is this more of a primary market or a secondary market engagement? Right, so this is more of a primary market engagement. Uh, it's a main issuing platform where you just buy tokens off it. Uh, there's no exchange to say right now, so there's no order book. You don't really actively buy and sell gold tokens against other cryptocurrency on this page because we believe that that particular function is fulfilled by the exchanges on the secondary market. Yeah, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So people don't have to worry about not being able to get their money back out of the DGX token. They can do that because they can go to a secondary market and transfer trans, uh, and trade it there, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. I would say that the main behavior we've seen so far are very buy and holders kind of like people. Ah, yeah, so, a lot of buy and holding. Yeah. For sure. Mm. Whenever they buy these tokens themselves, they look and they look to the secondary market for price movements, but they don't actively trade on it yet. Yeah, that makes until sense. like go appreciates. Yeah, that's correct. So, um, what got you into cryptocurrency to begin with? Right. So, uh, previously, I was working as a gold trader. Uh, I was actually trading the physical gold markets itself, and I kind of saw like there's a lot of arbitrage behavior that could happen on gold markets. But the problem is that there were no uh, markets that were trading twenty four seven. So, cryptocurrency being a market that trades around the clock provides a lot of opportunities for fungible trading. You could be trading gold tokens, gold, or rather like uh, any kind of cryptocurrency token down to its decimal placing, allowing you to make more accurate pricing and even like um, algorithmic trading. So I got involved as a, mostly as a gold trader. And I look at cryptocurrencies, I think like, well, this market has a hugely inefficient pricing model. And it's something that we could take advantage of as uh, capital traders. 
Fantastic. And like, what, what, what year was it when you decided to switch from being a traditional gold trader to going into crypto? Well, that's quite a while back in crypto terms. Uh, it's about 2014. So almost about six years ago. Yeah. Six years ago, you made the, you made the jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Six years ago. And right. you are the co-founder, correct? That's correct. Yeah. So my, my team is uh, held together with myself, my CEO, as, my C as well as my CTO. Uh, my CEO and myself, we both come from a very finance background. He was formerly a, a Wall Street trader as well. And uh, my CTO himself has been involved in the tech industry for the last like, 15 to 20 years. So we all come from the particular background needed to actually start this company, bootstrap it from the beginning and do what we have today. So did you end up taking an angel and venture capital money or did you just bootstrap it and move it to this position on your own? All right. So we, we did a, a seed round of an equity investment back in 2017, when we raised a total of about $1.75 million mm -hmm. from uh, venture capital companies like Global Brain of Japan, as well as Fernbushi Capital of China. Um, so through these two VC companies, we allowed ourselves to actually grow and scale the market out here in Asia, which they have been extremely helpful to us for. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, and what are your, so your other two co-founders, did they also, I mean, they had a lot of experience in these markets, but did you guys know each other for a long time beforehand? Yeah, we were, um, I knew my C CEO as well from uh, university. So we both went to NYU and my CTO was, uh, it's a brother-in-law in fact of my CEO. Oh, really? You went to NYU? That's so funny. I'm based in New York now, so I'm not far yeah. from NYU. That's great. Yeah. What did you study in, in college? I, was studied, uh, I studied finance. Okay. Uh, finance at Stern, yeah. And why did you decide to go into finance? Uh, I think growing up, I always had the exposure to the financial markets, um, either through my, my parents or just reading the news. It's always been something that attracted me a lot more than any other topics out there. Um, just plainly looking at the prices, looking at economic policies and how the entire economy is being run uh, and how actually firms out there derive value from either uh, capital raising or looking for uh, value out there in the market. So it's always been something that attracted me from, from like, so um, when someone comes on to the Digix market marketplace and they, they log on, they create a, a user, you know, login, they make, they make their own account and their profile. Do they, what is their experience going to be like? And what are the main things that they can do when they come onto the platform with you? Right. So right now in the new marketplace, we have two tiers of know your customer verification. Um, the first tier itself doesn't require much information apart from your basic information like your name, the date of birth, as well as an email address. Uh, we believe this is the easiest step to getting involved in Digix. You don't need to actually reveal too much of your personal information. Of course, with the lack of information, you are not able to purchase as many gold tokens as you would be wishing for. How many the can, you, second, can, you, can you purchase with that level? Uh, 10 DGX itself. So okay. 10, 10 grams of gold, it's about in dollar value, about $600 okay. worth of gold. Uh, as you move on into the second step, which allows you to buy up to 105 grams of DGX, you would be required to actually verify your personal identity. So this process, I believe, is pretty similar to most cryptocurrency exchanges uh, in the sense that you need to submit like a, a passport verification, a proof of residence to allow yourself to be verified as a real person before you can start to buy any more DGX. And why was it that you were able to keep things at a, at a small threshold and still remain, you know, compliant or whatever? How does that work? Is there, is there some sort of a policy that allows you to just do small amounts and that means it, it's not going to kind of trigger KYC and AML kind of um, requirements? Right. So there's no hard and fast rule out here uh, in a sense of like how many grams can an, an unverified person be buying. Uh, I guess we're doing this based on the opinions derived from our lawyers. And we're just taking a prudent approach in light of the new and upcoming licensing regime is happening here in Singapore. Oh, what is happening in Singapore? What's the latest uh, changes that are happening? That's interesting. Right, yeah. So the, the latest uh, talk in the town is that there is a new um, act that was actually designed for digital payments in general. Uh -huh. So whether they are remittance or they are uh, FX payments or cryptocurrency payments, they all fall under the Payments and Services Act which a lot of startups out there are actually actively applying for. I would say that this year is, is definitely going to be one of the more uh, game-changing year for startups located here in Singapore because this license itself allows it to be a little bit more legitimate as a business. Uh, it also opens up the entire new digital banking realm because the government is out here giving up to four licenses for digital banking 
and an undisclosed amount for startups who are looking to acquire a license under the Payments and Services Act. Oh, that's amazing. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's good to learn about that. Do you know when that act is going to be um, in effect? Mm -hmm. um, it started rolling out since the start of this year. Uh, the application window is six months. Okay. So as of July itself, you need to be fully registered and compliant with this act. Otherwise, you will not be able to operate and, and sell to local citizens here in Singapore. So oh. uh, I would say that the, the license will come into effect as of July. Um, okay, as of July. That's really good to know. I know some people that are mm -hmm. um, out in Singapore and they go back and forth. And so uh, I'll have to mm -hmm. talk to them about that. Well, gosh. Sure, they, yeah, you should. They, um, so are there any other types of uh, precious metal tokens that you are also offering? Or is it all to buy gold mm -hmm. with other currencies and that's the only issuance that you provide? Yes, um, right now we only offer precious metal around gold. Uh, there's been a lot of like conversations and interest into offering silver, but I would say that's not the main priority or demand as of right now. So we'll focus on just keeping it to DGX, the gold back token for now, uh, until we decide to actually move into the silver metal. So um, what kind of like, do you have any kind of statistics or any, any personal data on the level of need or desire on the part of, of your consumers for gold versus silver? Do you know like what the, what the how those two things relate? Uh, off the top of my head, I would say of the entire pool of customers that I have today, perhaps maybe about 30% of them are actively looking at silver as well. Mm -hmm. um, as to whether this 30% will actively trade a gold-silver relationship, I don't think so. Um, but I would say yeah, a third of them are actively asking like, hey, would you be offering silver tokens? Um, so yeah, I don't think it's going to be an actively traded market uh, as compared to the traditional capital ones. But yeah, I think it's still not, uh, there's still no real demand for silver tokens at this point. So as a primary issuance platform, how did you go about acquiring your users in the early days? What, was, what did it take to kind of get them on board? So we, we actually target the traditional consumer out there by telling them about buying gold in a new way before actually educating them about the entire blockchain aspect of this gold. Yeah. So if you look at a, you know, a traditional Bitcoin buyer, perhaps is someone that would be very interested in cryptocurrency. But a digital gold buyer should be someone that's interested in gold in general before actually looking at the entire crypto aspect of the token. So it's a lot of, a, it's a wider audience we're talking about here. Uh, people in this part of the world who want to buy gold, either for cultural reasons or for purely for investment purposes. And I, I guess so in some markets out here in this part of the world, getting access to investment grade gold is not as trustworthy a process or it's not as uh, easy or convenient as one that we provide here in the marketplace. So by allowing someone to be buying these gold tokens that are located here in Singapore, I think it's a lot more comfortable to them as compared to be buying like gold bars or the, or the shops within their local communities and keeping it at home. Absolutely. And so how many users do you have on your platform currently? Right now we have about close to about a thousand uh, users on the platform today. And what's their um, average investment level? Mm, I would say it varies anywhere between 30 to 50 grams in dollar value that would be 1500 to $2,000. So we're looking at quite an, um, an, like a group of people who, are, who have a little more buying power at the moment right now. Yeah, yeah. And so what is your uh, revenue model? Right, so we actually charge a markup on the gold token itself. Whenever a user is buying gold tokens from us, they are paying a little bit more than what the gold price is worth. Uh, mainly for the reason of custody, as well as the idea that you are buying uh, gold tokens that are secured, held in the vaults, and are identified to be investment grade gold. Got it. So, um, in terms of you're really just sort of uh, upgrade up, you're just charging a premium, a very small premium, to provide basically custody services. That's correct. Yeah. On top of that, we also uh, we also facilitate a transaction fee, which means whenever you transfer tokens from wallet to wallet you are charged a certain uh, fee for having that action to be allowed. And what is your custody fee versus transaction fee? So the custody fee right now, we are actually charging it at 0%. So we're offering it almost like a custody free token, but the transaction fee itself is charged at 0.13%. And so really you're a volume based model, right? It's just the more activity and volume that you have the the more um, you can able to make on the same on the same amount, really. That's correct. Yeah. 
And what's your volume like? Have you been um, increasing in volume exponentially in a, the, the, with the uh, Digix plat marketplace? I guess that uh, the volume really tracks uh, gold buying prices or rather gold volume in the actual world. Um, just recently when gold has been extremely volatile in the capital markets, the volume increased to about a couple of hundred thousand on the secondary markets. But when gold is on a more quieter note, especially on the weekends, you don't really see that much of a volume. So it's good to see that the crypto market for gold actually mirrors the capital markets for gold. Yeah. I guess that's the main objective that we're trying to actually achieve here. Yeah. So being a primary issuance platform, how is it that, I mean, I guess once somebody gets their issuing of, of tokens, they go to a secondary market and you lose all transaction fees, right? I mean, do you end up just sort of bleeding out quickly because you only are dealing with, you know, first onboarders to the, to the asset? Uh, I wouldn't say that way. Um, so far, the token holders out there are just, uh, they're, they're pretty clear that these gold tokens track gold prices. So we don't really lose any kind of like buying behavior there. So, but in terms of buying behavior, like people buy from you and so that gets you a transaction fee, but then they take it into their wallet. Maybe there's a transaction fee to put it in their personal wallet. And then they just, the DGX coin sells on a secondary market and you don't, you don't touch that action, right? There's no way to, to, to be a part of uh, that activity, correct? That's correct, yeah. So we only rely on the blockchain movement of gold tokens moving from wallet to wallet. However, if you're moving to an exchange, we don't really get, involved with whatever that happens within the exchange itself. Right. Wow. So that's really interesting. I mean, uh, there's not been a lot of platforms that I've talked with that are only primary issuing platforms, and this is really exciting. So uh, I hope that this that this continues to grow for you. Thank you so much for telling us about the uh, Digix Marketplace. Do you have anything else that you want to make sure we touch on before we sign off here? Right. So if you're looking to be purchasing cheaper gold, uh, right now in the month of March, we are offering a uh, 3% discount from spot prices. Uh, I think it's an extremely good time to be getting involved in gold with uh, all the new kind of like economic news that's been happening in the world right now. Yeah, so Absolutely. yeah, why not consider? Yes, thank you. And we'll have some links to below so people can uh, can see this below the episode. That'll be in the show notes. Sure. So, well, thank you so much, Sean. I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, this has been really enlightening. It's been great to find out more about the Digix platform and the DGX token. Thank you so much. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. All right, well, this is Monica Profit and Sean G signing off on the new tr trust economy. We'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks, you guys. You've been listening to the new trust economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at newtrusteconomy. Thanks for exploring the new trust economy with us.